Welcome to lesson number 21, detect and implement settings in repackaged applications. We learned what repackaging is and how it's done in video 20 and we actually executed a whole repackaging process with VLC Media Player in the previous video. So let's take a look at how you can discover where an application stores its settings as well as certain best practice rules that you must include in your MSI packages. We captured VLC, but if we open it up and have a look, we can see that automatic updates are enabled, something that we don't want in our repackaged applications. The reason for this is that when you repackage an application from an EXE to an MSI and an update arrives, it will of course override the files and registry, but it will not update your MSI. All the MSI information will remain on your personal computer and you will have two VLC media player installations in your add remove programs amongst other things. This is the first and most important guideline in the realm of repackaging. Automatic updates for repackaged applications should be disabled. That's great, but where is this setting stored? I'm at a loss, so let's try the following procedure on a virtual system with advanced repackager installed. So let's install VLC Media Player as default. And after we install it, don't open it up. We leave it like it is and start Advanced Repackager and check the Session Monitoring option and then we click Start Local. After the initial system scan is completed and Advanced Repackager prompts us to make modifications on the machine, launch VLC Media Player and cancel the automatic updates. Now that they are disabled, Click OK in Advanced Repackager to perform the second snapshot on the machine. Now that everything has been completed, let's examine the snapshot to see what has changed on the machine. And as you can see, everything we defined in VLC is saved in these two files which are stored in the pair user folder. So let's go there, take those files and copy them to our PC where we have the VLC MSI that we previously created. I know that the file can be easily added in application data folder present in files and folders page, but there is a problem. If I install the package and then delete it, and another user logs onto the machine and start VLC, the MSI will notice that the files are not present on his profile and try to find the MSI in order to grab them and place them to that specific user as well. The problem is that the MSI is no longer there, remember we deleted it, so that the user will be stuck indefinitely and cannot start the program. As a disclaimer, this only happens if the shortcut is advertised, so see video 8 for more details or check out our user guide regarding advertised shortcuts. But as a best practice, we should place these files in a folder separate from the installation directory. So in the files and folders section, expand our installation directory and add a new folder called user data or whatever you want to call it. Put these two files in the folder and that's it. Now that's good, but it's not the end of the story. We have the files now in program files there, but VLC doesn't obtain its information from there. Thus, we need to add a custom action that, that copies the files during the MSI's self-healing or repair. I wrote a simple VB script that copies the VLC folder from program files and copies it to the updata VLC. Now that I've got the script, I'll go to Custom Actions tab and add a launch attached file script to the sequence. 
The file type is VV script and the execution time should be set to immediately, but I don't want the script to self heal and crash the installation, so I'll uncheck the file installation if custom action returns an error box. As an execution stage condition, we will put the script to be executed in maintenance and install mode, and under condition, we will only type not installed or reinstall. Now, when you have an advertised shortcut, when you launch it, it starts an internal check of the MSI and sees if something is missing, for example, a file or, over, or a registry. Only if something is missing from the system, the self-healing is started. But our files are in program files, so they are technically not missing. So what happens to the second user which logs in onto the machine? Well, in order for the self-healing to be triggered on his profile when he starts the shortcut, we need to create a current user registry so that the MSI doesn't see it on his profile and start the self-healing process. When the self-healing process starts, because our custom action is placed to run in maintenance mode and we have the reinstall condition, this will be executed and will copy the VLC settings under his profile. So let's place this random registry here and that is it. Now we know how to discover application settings and some best practice tips on how to handle user data. In the next video, we will have a look over the active setup mechanism.